Uh, hi, this is Steve from Retro Man Blog, and welcome to this uh, very special edition of Retro Sonic Podcast. Well, you just heard Targets, the opening track from the superb new album by Fake Names called Expendables. Uh, well, Fake Names is a collaboration, including some sort of people that you might uh, know their, their, their bands that they've been in. Um, you've got uh, Brian Baker from Minor Threat and Bad Religion, Michael Hampton from Embrace and Faith, Johnny Temple from Girls Against Boys, Brendan Canty from Fugazi, and I'm very pleased to welcome vocalist from Fake Names, Dennis Dixon. Um, welcome, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to, to sort of have, to get you involved, and thanks very much indeed. So, yeah. as, I, as I said, that's um, that was a great track, the opening track from Fake Names' brand new album, which is out now on Epitaph Records. So, first of all, I mean, I know you're a huge music fan, as we're going to get onto a little bit later, but so what was it like getting involved with all these um, sort of names from your, probably from your past that you were probably into when you were younger. And um, what was it like as a, as a music fan yourself, you know, being, finding yourself in a band with all these sort of um, names from these illustrious names from the past, you know, how, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, now I feel pretty good about it, but in, in the early days, it was very, very surreal because um, as you said, that, that was, that's my record collection from my youth. I mean, still, <laughs> you know, but I'm such a nerd about music that um there's so much about DC hardcore that I know mm. that when they're talking about stuff and people, I'm like, Oh, that's that guy from that band. And they're like, how do you know that? I'm like, I just, I just know that kind of stuff. And then, so for me to be in that room with those guys, it's just, uh, it's pretty fantastic. Um, I mean, they're excellent players. They're excellent people. And uh, I'm very, very glad that for, for reasons not really known to me, they, they asked me to be uh, in their band. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, when Brian asked me, he came up to me at a festival a couple of years back and he said, I have a new band with Michael Hampton. Do you want to be the singer? I said, uh, yes, no follow-up questions or anything. I'm just like, yes. Uh, and that was it, you know? So, so you didn't know what, I mean, even if they'd have said, we've got this country and Western band or something, you know, you just said, yes, you put uh, your name down. Whatever I would it still do it. <laughs> <laughs> 20, I would still band, do it. 20 piece bagpipe orchestra, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's Brian Baker. He was in minor threat. Come on, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So no, and 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 um, it is interesting because I think that when when people uh, when people see the bands that we've been in, and I mean, the, it's the guy from Refused, and it's the guy from Minor Threat, and and the guy from Faith. Mm. Um, I, I I assume that a lot of people think it's yeah, it's just going to be like a hardcore band. But I love the fact that um, <clears throat> what Brian and Michael is going for when they write their songs is that they just want to be like. I mean, this sounds weird, but it's an adult punk band. <laughs> <laughs> when i saw the names involved and refused especially uh, you know and my, i was thinking yeah it's going to be a thrashy hardcore band from you know people in their sort of 50s maybe yeah. you know and i thought wow you know this is interesting but when i heard it i i, I i'm going to say personally i was quite pleasantly surprised because i mean i i love the melodic side of punk and what you've got here on on the the, the sort of two albums that you've done in the single is like it's really tight melodic punk you know there's no waste it's just this really taut taut is that a good word you know like really yeah. tight um yeah. you know melodic punk you know and I, I think it might surprise people but i i think pleasantly because you've got all the energy of, the, of punk but it's got the melodies as well so i think it would appeal to a lot of different sides of of, of the punk genre you know people like myself yeah. like more than the buzzcocks <clears throat> the melodic stuff and people like the, the, the hardcore fans will still get that energy as well yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, it's interesting because when 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 Brian and Michael were busy like inventing hardcore because that's kind of what they did, they were into punk. Mm -hmm. Like when I whenever I talked to them about like negative approach or stuff like that, they're like, no, no, we were into like Generation X, the Buscocks. We, you know, that's that's what they were into, and that's still kind of what they're into. And I mean, even like Brian like classic rock. He's like kind of a classic rock dude. So it's like it's more that they're they're going for the stuff that they fell in love with when they were in their hardcore bands yeah. than trying to emulate the hardcore bands of their past. I think it's yeah. and I think it is perfect because I think uh, it really plays to their strengths and it plays to my strength. And I think it's just as you said, it's like uh, it's quite melodic, but it has a lot of energy and has a lot of like propulsion. But it's it's still kind of very catchy, and I think yeah. it's just like uh, I think it would it wouldn't have been as good if we wanted to to try to do like a thrasher hardcore band i don't think it would have been this exciting yeah that's a good point 
And Epitaph Records have put out, so that's quite a big label, isn't it now? So you've, um, that's put out the new album. And are you, you're touring in the States, I think, are you, to, to promote the album? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to tour uh, ne- next Sunday. I head out to the States. I mean, yeah, like mid-April, we start touring. And it will be interesting because at this point, we released twice as many records as shows played. So, so that's, <laughs> that's also going to be fascinating. Um, we only played the one show, and that, that show was even before the first record came out. And we played one oh. show in New York. And then I was supposed to, we were supposed to do a couple of shows around the release of the first record, but then we all know what happened in 2020. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super excited to be able to play these sh- songs live mm. and to feel like what that's going to feel like. Because I mean, I, I even remember like when we recorded the first record, I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. But then to play those songs live, I'm like, oh no, it's actually really good. But then when we recorded this record, I'm like, this is great. Yes. So I'm hoping that uh, to elevate these songs uh, <laughs> to the next level when we play it live. Well, I think it's, uh, it's um, yeah, I, I think it must be great. You, I mean, you, you must be raring to go because now you've got a bit of a back catalogue of, of uh, enough for a full set of songs, you know, and I said they're, yeah. they're all, I, I can just imagine that they're going to sound great live. I'm, I'm going to pick another track now, if, if I may, which I think is a great song is uh, from the album, which we'll have a, a little snip of, and that's um, Delete Myself. Great song, yeah. And, and I think it's like we're trying to we're just trying to write great songs. I mean, I have a tendency to be quite pretentious in a lot of my outings, <laughs> but with fake names, it's it's quite uncomplicated. We just want to write great songs. And as I said, I mean, those guys, uh, you know, th- their love for like seventies punk rock and classic rock. I mean, it shines through. And then I love power pop, and I also love that kind of punk. So I mean, it's it's a it's a really good fit. Yeah, I mean, it's funny your pretentious thing. I was listening to one of your um, your YouTube about the, when when there's in there was it when you're when refused and you stopped the gig halfway through to play Serge Gainsbourg and Jane Birkin's Your Tame halfway through the gig. Yep, yep. <laughs> just that's because you, you just liked the song and you wanted to hear it, you know. I just thought that was fantastic. You know, I mean, that's yeah, uh, that that's great. But um, I don't know. I mean, and and well, I mean, you've you've done that bef- in the past with with this band, which I'm gonna. I'm going to do what you've done with your YouTube channel, and I'm just going to yeah. surprise you. I'm going to go, hey. Oh, there you go. that is Lost. my power pop band, yeah. Lost Patrol Band. So, you yeah. know, I think you've you've gone through phases of just stripping it back to the basics. I mean, Lost Patrol Band, fantastic power yeah. pop punk album. I mean, that's not a million miles away from... from no, no, no. 
you know, so it is anyone... it is funny that uh, Michael Hampton had that record in his collection, and he really oh. liked it. He didn't realize, he didn't know it was me. He's like, once, oh, right. yeah, yeah. Once we, um, once I became the singer, like I guess he googled me. He's like, oh, I have that record. That's a cool power pop record. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. yes, I have touched upon this before. And I saw some review where it's like people like, oh, it's weird to hear Dennis singing this type of stuff. I'm like, oh, well, then you haven't, uh, then you're really, you haven't followed my career then. Cause I've done, uh, I mean, even with Noise Conspiracy, that was more rock and roll, but I was definitely like touching upon power pop stuff sometimes and catchy choruses and mm. that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, it's not a million miles away from stuff that I've done before. Well, I think I'm going to interrupt the show there for a little um, public service announcement, and I'm going to play a little bit of um, the Lost Patrol Band, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. And I'm going to I'm going to pull rank here, and I'm going to say this is a great track. This is my personal favourite choice. <laughs> this feels like drowning. a great track lost patrol band so just to show that dennis is not always pretentious and um <laughs> far from it <laughs> and if you've seen his youtube channel i'm sure you, i can assure you that he uh all any pretensions are blown out the window um yeah. <laughs> great so going back to you said that michael hampton had the that, that lost patrol band album how did they decide to sort of um choose you i mean obviously they're probably aware of you from refused but um is it like, you know, when, when a football team loses its manager and they have these sort of name, a short list of names and they kick a few around and they say, who's available? Or, I mean, or did, did you know, how did they decide on you? Were they uh, aware of refused? Uh, yes, they were. I, I don't think, like, honestly, I don't think I was part of the early conversation of the band. I think they had a couple of names in mind, but they didn't work out for reasons. And um, I met Johnny Temple because Invasion played a show with Girls Against Boys. And he was super nice and we really hit it off. And then um, I met him at that same festival where Brian Baker came up to me and um, we were playing with Refused. And I think it was just Johnny Temple saw Refused and he's like, oh, that dude, he's pretty awesome. Like, maybe we should ask him. And then uh, I think that was it. I think he texted the other guys during the Refused set saying, like, we should ask Dennis. And then I guess... Michael Hampton took out his Google computer and like, who is this guy? And then Brian's like, oh yeah, Dennis is great. I like Refuse. Yeah. So I think that was it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that, that must be great. You must have been made up, you know, to have that opportunity, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was funny because they asked me and I was like, my mind was kind of blown. I'm like, holy shit, what's happening? Like, uh, and then Brian was like, well, it's this thing that we're doing. Like, do you want to sing? I'm like, yeah. And I remember texting um Andre that plays drums in Invasion because he has a tattoo on his arm that says 80s hardcore. <laughs> that's <laughs> and a, I that's a from like, general, quite a general tattoo. <laughs> 80s hardcore. He's love 80s hardcore. And I texted him. I'm like, I'm in a band. I think Brian Baker asked me to be in a band. He's like, holy shit, that's awesome. And then a couple of weeks went by and I'm like, did I dream this? What happened? And I didn't hear from them. And I'm like, maybe they changed their mind. And then, um, and they sent me an email and they sent me a couple of songs and I did some demos and then they were like, all right, the demo sounds great. You need to come over and hang out. We need to talk about music. And uh, I, I flew to New York for a couple of days and just to hang out with them and talk about music basically. And they had a couple of, there's a couple of bands that I had to like uh, and listen to, to be a part of a part mm. of fake names. And who were they? The Ruts. Oh. Very, very important. Yeah. 
Interesting. And a band called Empire. Empire? I don't know. I don't know it's, Empire. It's people from Generation X. Oh, okay. After Generation X. It's like a bit post-punky. And it's one of those bands, like, it's fine. But in D.C., that band Empire was massive. Oh, right. So they were like, do you like the Ruts? I'm like, yeah, the Ruts are fine. So then all night we just listened to the Ruts because they're like, you have to love the Ruts. I'm like, I guess I have to love the Ruts. And then they played me that band Empire, uh, which is like a, a weird like offshoot of Generation X. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I'm yeah. a big Generation X fan. I mean, they, they, yeah. they're, they're playing, strangely, Generation Six. Which, oh, wow. Which is like um, Tony James and Billy Idol with Steve Jones and Paul Cook of the Sex Pistols. So Generation oh, X. Yeah. So they're, they're doing... They're supporting Iggy Pop in um, oh wow in July, so that's like <laughs> wow, what a great name! <laughs> yeah, that's great. But yeah, so I had to um, I had to go through the ringers, and they were like, we sat up all night listening to the Ruts, and I'm like, okay, I get it. And then I mean, I had the Ruts record, but it wasn't one of those bands that I was like, I didn't listen religiously to the Ruts. But uh, mm. now since I'm in fake names, uh, Ruts is very very important. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it because my last. Um, podcast victim, um, a guest was um, Lee Hegarty of Ruts DC, and oh. <laughs> um, so there you go. So it's um, perfect, uh, f- fantastic band. You know, very very. <sighs> They're a band that sort of their reputation has has increased. I think over the years. You know, I mean, obviously it's so yeah. sad. And Malcolm Owen and Paul Fox died quite young, which is sad. But then um, they continued as Ruts DC. <clears throat> Dave Ruffy and Seg, sort of like the Sly and Robbie, really of the punk generation you know very reggae influenced uh, lot, lots of great uh, clash influences from that and and then lee hegarty joined the guitar after paul fox passed away um and they're making some fantastic albums they're they're, they're touring now regularly there check out the new stuff you know it's it's i have to yeah it's really really cool. great you know yeah. and i said lee was a is, a is a great guy um he's a good pal and uh, we, i said we did the recent podcast with him as well Yeah, I like the Ruts, and it, it was interesting because it, it, they're one of those bands. I'm like, yeah, they're fine, and, but to be a member of Fake Names, you have to love the Ruts. So you know, now I love the Ruts. <laughs> well, that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. A good, well, brilliant homework for you to do there. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And, and it sort of ties in a little bit strangely with um, as a music nerd uh, myself. You know, um, I do love these sort of coincidences and strands of music that that, that run through. <laughs> things because it ties in a little bit with the, the hardcore scene because um henry rollins is a massive fan of, of ruts yes and just before he passed away uh, one of his last performances with the, with the ruts was um with for paul fox there was a tribute show in london and with henry rollins doing lead vocals yeah 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 i know um which was a one of those memorable nights i mean obviously hugely emotional because you knew that paul fox was Unfortunately, you know, didn't have long with us. Um, yeah. Henry Rollins was probably the only person they said that could fill the shoes of of Malcolm Owen, and um, yeah. he, he was immense. It's fantastic. I mean, I think you can see videos from the show. Yeah, I've I've watched those videos. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and it, but it, it is interesting it. because because it's like um, how our music uh, used to be so regional, mm. and and all those people from DC 
the Ruts, that was their band. And I mean, maybe if you went to New York, no one cared about the Ruts. Or if you went mm. to Boston, no one cared about the Ruts. But mm. everyone in DC loved the Ruts. And, and it's just fascinating because I think that, I mean, obviously Michael and Henry Rollins had their first band together. And I'm sure they were really influenced by the Ruts, even though SOA sounded nothing like the Ruts. And it, it, it is kind of cool how that comes full circle and then Henry yeah. sings for the Ruts and I'm in a band that's influenced by the Ruts and it just it, it is quite fascinating how that how that tra- tracks you know you must have got into sort of that, that early American hardcore scene probably similar to me was it was it I mean you're from the north of Sweden aren't you um, yes. Umea. so you're, you're probably quite remote from Stockholm and uh, Gothenburg and the, the, the major musical cities but I know Umea's got a good music scene yeah so how did you become aware of the, of the sort of the American punk scene at the time? Because you must have been quite young when you picked up on it. Well, I mean, my, my journey was that of, uh, I, was, I became a metalhead and I was into metal. And then from metal, I got into like what, what it's known as crossover, which is like, you know, metal punk or punk that sounds like metal. And that led me to hardcore. And that then I discovered like Black Flag and Minor Threat. And then, I mean, it, it is interesting because... I got into punk and hardcore around 1987, maybe 88. Mm. Uh, I mean, a lot of those bands, they broke up in 1984, 1983, Mm. Mm. but 1988, it felt like it could have been 20 years ago since they broke up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Because that's just kind of how I felt. And I mean, I remember like discovering Minor Threat and I'm like, oh, this really old hardcore band, Minor Threat. And I mean, you know, they broke up only like a couple of years before I discovered them. But because it was so, I lived so remotely and it just felt like from a different time and different place. And uh, yeah, it, it was just weird to feel so disconnected from that. And then yeah. I, I mean, I was, as I said, I was into metal and I really, I, I liked buying records and I was like kind of a nerd early on. But then when I got into punk and hardcore, I just dove right into it. And I just became like a, a collector and I, I wanted to know everything. I wanted to have all these records. And uh, especially, which is interesting, especially that DC hardcore scene with Minor Threat and Faith and Scream and mm. all those bands, they were like on the top of my list of, of that type of hardcore that I listened to. So it is, it's quite a, it's quite interesting to be in like a dc hardcore band <laughs> yeah <laughs> but being like the, yeah, the yeah. talk swedish guy you know yeah yeah no it's it's a great story you know and um yeah i, I mean for me it was getting into oh, probably over in here in the uk at the time probably 80 81 was like dead kennedy's yeah um i think a big thing was i don't know if you had this over there it was let them eat jelly beans the the combination yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. alternative yeah. tentacles, which was probably the first time a lot of us had heard Bad Brains and Black Flag, you know, pay yeah. to come on that. Great. And I know yeah. you mentioned this in your one of your YouTube channels. Pay. You, you, yeah, yeah. So, I'm so jealous because you had, you've got, you've got, oh no, you've got the pay to come seven inch single, you know. I do. Down. I do. Oh, uh, yeah. It's oh, quite that. pricey. <laughs> It is interesting because, as you said, like, Let Me Eat Jelly Beans, it was like a lot of people's first introduction to American hardcore. Um, and even though I discovered it years later, it was also one of my first introductions to a lot of those bands. Uh, someone had a tape and someone knew, like, I got into punk and hardcore and someone gave me that tape. And I, I mean, it was the first time I've heard... Uh, like Dead Kennedy, well, not, maybe not Dead Kennedys, but a lot of those bands, it was like the first time I heard those bands. I mean, that was also for me an important, you know, compilation, even though I discovered it like probably six, seven years after you guys did. But uh, I mean, it's still to this day a pretty awesome compilation. So the, the first time I was, uh, maybe I was 19 and uh, Union Carbide Production played a show in Umeå mm. and I worked the show 
Oh, right. I was I was working for the for the the people that set up the show, and uh, they told me like you need to go to the liquor store with with the Union Carbide guys. And I was wearing like a minor threat hoodie, hmm. and they were like, "Oh, you're into hardcore," and I'm like, "I," because I knew who Union Carbide was, but for me, they were like they're a couple years older. So when you're 19 and they're like 24, hmm. they're just like old men playing rock and roll. And then they start talking about like hardcore and, you know, how they love Minor Threat. And I'm like, my mind was blown. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is happening? Like, why do these guys know about hardcore? Yeah. And uh, and also the show was obviously fantastic. But it, it is funny because I just met um, I just met one of those dudes and we talked about that. And yeah. they were yeah. like, what? I don't remember that show. Like, I'm like, yes, I was at that show. I, I helped arrange that show. And uh, <laughs> we oh, talked great. about hardcore, you know. <laughs> fantastic. So tell us, uh, let's let's pick a track. So give us one of your, I know, again, we could go on for hours about this, but just defining sort of DC hardcore track that you you, you remember from your youth that, you, that really stood out and grabbed you. Let's give it a spin. Yes, we're going to listen to a song by Minor Threat, maybe Small Man, Big Mouth, Minor Threat, because my first hardcore band used to play that live. Oh, great. Well, let's hear it. Fantastic. So, so tell us a little bit about the the other members of Fake Names, and um, you know, to get, run through, give give us a little breakdown on them and, and what they do, and how you interact, you know, the characters, a little bit of gossip or anything. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Brian Baker was obviously in, in Minor Threat, and then in Dag Nasty, and then he played in the Sleaze Band Junkyard. Which is not that bad, actually. And then he was, he's been in Bad Religion for the past like 20 plus years, something like that. Uh, he was actually, he was offered to go on tour with REM as a guitar player. And at the same time, he got asked to be in Bad Religion and he picked Bad Religion and all his friends were like, hey, Chris, you should go on tour with REM. And he's like, well, REM, that's going to be a tour to Bad Religion. That might be the gig. And it is still the gig. So I think he made the, the right choice. Uh, Brian's a little bit of the like the guy in charge of making fake names happening. And um, he's super smart and he's super funny and super sarcastic. And uh, he's a real joy to hang out with. And he's just a great guitar player. Um, and then you have Michael Hampton that was in Henry Rollins' first band, SOA. Mm -hmm. And then he was in Faith with Alec Mackay, Ian Mackay's brother, and then he was in Embrace with Ian Mackay. Mm. And then um, for the past, like, whatever, 20 years, he's been doing, he's been doing score, scoring music for TV shows. Oh, That's kind okay. of what up to, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's super nice, really nerdy. Like, like, I think you would get along with him really nicely. He, he loves to talk about 60s garage rock and, uh, you know, 70s punk, and he's like a record collector nerd kind of guy. Super nice. Yeah. And then we have Johnny Temple, who plays the bass, and he was in Soul Side. Oh, well, he is in Soul Side and Girls Against Boys, because both those bands are still playing shows. And uh, he also runs a book publishing company called Akashic Books that puts out a oh. lot of fantastic books. Uh, Akashic they're Books. They're doing like the Glennie Friedman books, with the photo books, and uh, some yes. really cool stuff. And he's like the nicest guy. And, uh, I'm always staying at his house when I'm in New York. And then the, the new guy of the band is Brendan Canty from uh, Rites of Spring and Fugazi. And he was in a hardcore band called Deadline back in the day. And um, he is uh, incredibly funny and incredibly positive and really super nice. He's one of those dudes that walk into the room and he's just like, he's just laughing. There's always a story and he's always laughing, because, which is interesting because... I was lucky enough to see Fugazi a couple of times live and even the International Noise Conspiracy opened up for Fugazi once. Mm -hmm. And 
they seem really serious and they seem really like focused on that thing. And uh, so to be able to hang out with him and he's just like a boisterous, uh, very happy person. It makes me, uh, it makes me very glad, but they're, they're a great bunch of people. And it's like, when you grow older and when you sort of define why we're doing this, it just becomes a bit easier because everybody mm. just wants to play music and everybody wants to have a good time. We don't want any drama, no bullshit, no ego. Mm. It's just mm. like, you just want to play in this band and, and, and write great songs basically. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can I can see the attraction of that. You know, you get yeah. that, you get all that angst and all that out of your system, don't you? And then you 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 learn from mistakes, I guess. You know, and uh, over the years, and uh, you know, Hopeful. being in bands. And... <laughs> 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 so so let's um, pick out another a, a fake names track then that you um, you'd like to play. All right, let's see what we got here. I would like to play the song "Don't Blame Yourself," which is oh. one of my favorite tracks. Tell us a little bit about the, about the songwriting process then, because you're, you're based over, you're still living over in, in Sweden, and, and and they're obviously out in, in the states. How are you sort of constantly swapping ideas? I mean, do you are you involved in the songwriting, the music side of things, or is it just uh, the lyrics? It's just the lyrics. Uh, Michael and Brian writes all the songs. I think that um, Michael is kind of the guy that arranges all the songs. Brian sends him his riff and then he kind of like constructs songs from Brian's riffs and then they'll send me demos and then we'll send them back and forth a couple of times. And um, they don't really interfere that much in, in what I do vocally or lyrically once in a while, Brian can say like, Oh, I like the old chorus a bit better. It's a bit more catchy. So maybe we should look at the old chorus instead of this one. Cause usually I try to send them uh a couple of different versions of the song. I'm like, here's one ID and here's another ID. And then they can pick and choose a little bit. Uh, and there's a lot of demos being sent back and forth, basically. Yeah. And then uh, once we feel like we're getting close, I usually spend a little bit more time on them and try to like finalize the lyrics and do some harmonies and kind of like put them into really good shape. Um, and then, yeah, then we record records. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I guess you're you're going to go over to the states and re- get ready and rehearse for the tour. Yep. Yeah. It feels very exciting. Uh, as I said, we only played one show, and uh, now we have a little bit more material to choose from. And we're gonna select some really cool covers that we can play as well. And uh, I, I mean, it's gonna be rad. I think we're gonna practice for three days before the first show, and I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be great. I'm super yes. excited. Um, I mean, first of all, just for people to hear the record, but then then for us to be able to perform it live because I think the the power is gonna be. Um, very palpable when we when we yeah. do this songs live yeah oh yeah i can i can imagine so is it a coast to coast tour are you doing many dates or is, is it a sort of no it, it, it's only eight shows uh we're doing four shows on the east coast and then we fly over to the west coast and then we do sh- four shows on the west coast it's like uh yeah it's like two weekends basically mm. um and then i'm hoping uh i am hoping that we can come over to europe later this year that, i would love that i mean I don't think Michael ever toured Europe, so I think it would be first for him, which is kind of cool. And and I know that everybody everybody's down. I think it's just a matter of like like everyone's schedule, basically, like making sure that Brian is not with Bad Religion or or that I'm doing stuff. So I, I, I'm hoping that we can do some European dates uh, before the year is over. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I certainly hope so. I mean, I, I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to that, you know. And um, maybe how about Way Out West Festival in August or something like that, you know? Oh, I would love to. I would love to. <laughs> I might have to pitch that to to the Way Out West people or yeah. pitch it to fake names. <laughs> we can really go, you know. But uh, I really seriously hope you you come over to, to to well. So I say I still say Europe, but of course we're not in Europe anymore. But um, no, come over not. to the UK and and Europe. <laughs> it would be unfortunately. <laughs> You know, no band wants to come to the UK anymore now since bloody Brexit, which is a pain in the ass. But uh, yeah. anyway, that's another another matter. But uh, yeah, it'd be fantastic. So anyway, we will obviously um, put links on the, the respective blog feature um, yeah. to fake names, and we will obviously keep everybody up to date on your news. But um, you know, and we, we'll be the first to tell everybody about any hopeful UK and European shows. I'm sure. Yeah, that's kind of I would love to. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's let's go back to uh, to the first album, which I which I also love. I think it's a, it's a great record. Um, yeah, we don't want people to forget this. I mean, it's all about obviously the, the Expendables, a brand new album which is out on Epitaph Records. Um, but um, don't forget the debut album as well. Um, yeah, I love being them. Being them is a is a brilliant track. I think that's that's fantastic. I think, um, yeah, but, I think being them was the first song that I wrote uh, lyrics to uh, with fake names. Yeah. It was yes. one of three tracks they, they sent me to do demos and Being Them was one of them. And it was already called Being Them. And I just played on that. And then uh, I sent that back and they liked it. And yeah, that is a great song. Yeah, it's a great one. But you've chosen um, another, well, they're all, they're, I said they're all brilliant songs on this this album as well. And uh, it's a short, sharp shock of a record. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant record. Yeah. Um, don't be confused because it does play at uh, 45 RPM. So um, it's a 12. <laughs> and I keep getting caught out by it. You know, and I'm thinking, hey, this is a real grungy, grunge core record. You know, it's really yeah. slow and grungy and grindy. And I think, <laughs> oh, shit, it's on 45 RPM. <laughs> so um, don't be surprised, everybody. Um, but, you know, you've gone for This Is Nothing, which um, 
you picked yeah. as your favorite from the album. Is there a particular story behind This Is Nothing? No, I think it's just a great song. A great I really track. like it. I like the, the way the chorus flows. It's a really nice track. Yeah. And I think you mentioned a little good thing when we were just off air for a technical issue briefly there. Um, you said, obviously, you know, there's a, there's a lot of history between all of you. If you think about all the, the bands that you've been in, the, the, the music that you've played, the places you've been over the, over the 40 odd years that some, some of you have been yeah, in bands, yeah, yeah. 13, 40 years. And yeah. I think you said something nice there that, you know, it's about time you, you know, you need to create some history for fake names. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. obviously starting with the tour in the States, hopefully there will be. And I think, um, obviously all your other the many and varied projects that all of you have got, you know, I hope that this will continue, you know, and, um, and, uh, well, let's, let's end that little section on fake names. Um, with this is nothing from the yep. self-titled debut album. Perfect. Right. A little, a little um, addendum to fake names there, because one thing you mentioned yes. that you were going to do some covers. Yes. Now, this is one of my favourite things that I love about music is a nice little tenuous link going back to Ruts DC and Lee Hegarty, guitarist of Ruts DC, and all that, the, all that linking that we've done. Um, Lee is in a super group of his own, actually, a punk super group. Well, they don't like to be called a punk super group. Let's, let's call it a collaboration called wingmen okay. and which is um i like it i like the name because it's it's not not the the main stars of each of their name of their bands it's the the drummer from johnny moped okay. band and it's paul gray the bass player from the dam yep and it's baz warren who's the singer and the current singer and um guitarist in the stranglers and lee hegarty of ruts dc so again a fantastic legacy between them and I saw them play, and they've got a debut album out, which is absolutely superb. You know, it's 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 really really great. Um, but they they they're quite clever because they call themselves wingmen, sort of self deprecating, really. You know, they know they're not the main stars, <laughs> <laughs> and they've they've done a, a brilliant UK tour, which has got, went down a storm. You know, I mean, they've just it's just really took off. You know, and they didn't play any of the major hits of their parent bands you know they didn't right, play right. Blues, they didn't play babylon's burning they yeah, did yeah. one quite an obscure stranglers track they played an eddie and the hot rods 
song because Paul Gray was in Eddie and the Hot Rods. Yes, he was, yeah. And then they did a couple of great covers, you know, like maybe pretty obvious covers like Stooges, you know, Bowie, Bowie T-Rex, you know, but it was just so well um, well received, you know, and, and they did they did avoid the, the trap of be- turning into a cabaret band and doing like New Rose and that. And so with Fake Names, you, you touched on the fact that you might do some covers. Are you... Are you how are you doing that? Are you are you going down the route of some obscure covers, or are you going to do some? Are you going to play, you know, some of the classics from your parent bands? No, that's that's the interesting thing because I think that when when we did the first record and uh, we were supposed to play shows on that one, Brian said, "Oh, we should just do songs from all of our bands." like a Dag Nasty track and an Embrace song. But then Michael Hamden said, we're never playing an Embrace track. That's just off the table. <laughs> and um, now I think with two records in the bag, we don't need to rely on those records. I mean, it would be kind of weird. It's like, oh, let's play a Minor Threat song. So we're doing what the wingmen are doing. We're just playing some great punk songs that uh, that that we love. Um I can I can tell you the songs because this might not be out before we we've done the tour, so we're not going to spoil anything. But we're we're learning uh, "Sick of Being Sick" with the Damned. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, and um, I found that "Essence Rare" with Gang of Four. Great yeah. choice. So those are the two tracks that we're looking at right now. Yeah. Oh, fantastic choice. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, and that, they'd be. I mean, they're tracks that we we play in our regular episode of Retrosonic Podcast. So. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I, I mean, the only problem is I'm, I've got a day off tomorrow, so I might edit. I might be editing this in a day, so um, I, I don't All know right. whether I should put that in or not. Oh, we'll spoil it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you better do a couple more different covers, you know. To uh, exactly, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure that uh, as tour progresses, I'm sure that we'll, we'll play more. I mean, it is one of those deals where, like, oh, we should play that song, and we can learn the song. I mean, we we know songs, so I think it, it'll. It might shift and change before we're uh, we're playing the final show, but those are the ones that we're starting with. Fantastic! Well, great. Well, um, good. That was a nice little PS to the fake names. Yeah. Story. So already <laughs> we're creating a bit of history there, you know. I first really got into your your music through International Noise Conspiracy. So I first saw you on stage would have been probably 2001, at the height of the what the NME used to call subtly. You can see why we had Brexit in the end, the Viking invasion. <laughs> it's like the, the, the Swedish you know invasion of which I think they loved because all the bands sung in English. Um, yep. Because England, in England, we're not very we're not very good with foreign bands you know with with them um, bands that sing in foreign languages so yeah, yeah. um that was a height of that the, the hives were probably the yep. trailblazers at the time and um first touring that we did with noise conspiracy we toured with the hives we did a european tour with the hives we did a u.s tour with the hives we did a scandinavian tour with the hives so they were definitely like i think we just felt that we we're doing a kind of a similar thing mm-hmm. um and there was never any like uh bad blood or any yeah. jealousy it was always like we're they're just friends of ours um it was a bit weird um when we did our second tour of the states with noise conspiracy we brought hives along as the support band uh so the hives were the first band out and then there was an american band and then we were like the headlining act and in the middle of that tour uh, they flew to the uk and did like a tv thing 
and they released that Alan McGee record, that uh, your new favorite band record. Oh yeah, so compilation. Yeah. W- yeah. When they were gone for like just three days of the tour, they were gone. But from being like the opening band that no one cared about, and then they came back like three days later, all of a sudden like they were like the biggest band on that yeah. bill um, <laughs> for like the last week of that tour. And it was like one of the funniest stories was that uh, we were playing the Roxy in LA and we sold it out two nights with Noise Conspiracy. Yeah, But Hives were like the opening band. So Swedish press got in touch with our label because we were on the same label on Burning Heart Records. And they said, um, we want to do an interview with the Hives. I heard that they're, you know, they're, 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 it's a great success over there in the States. Mm. And our label said, well, I mean, it's a noise conspiracy tour. The Hives are just the opening band. And, and the, the, the press people were like, well, we don't care about the noise conspiracy. So there was like a big thing in the newspaper where there's a picture of the Hives in front of the Roxy. And it says Hives are playing to sold out venues in America. And then there's a really small picture and it says the friends in noise conspiracy. <laughs> and so when we came home from the tour, everyone's like, oh, you've been on tour with the Hives. I'm like, no, the Hives were on tour with us. <laughs> well, uh, but that's a classic, isn't it? I mean, it reminds yeah. me of another uh, a, a bit of self plugging as usual. I did a podcast with Chris Wilson of Flaming Groovies, who Paul Slattery, my photographer friend, worked with, and um, he's a great guy. He'd, he'd like to drink. And I was talking to him, and I said, so how, how do you, did you feel about, you know, becoming, being a cult band? And he, he sort of slammed his pint glass on the table and beer spilt everywhere. And he's like, we're not a cult band. He said, what you've got to remember is the Ramones supported us. The Ramones supported us at the Roundhouse. That famous gig, that the pistol, every, they, the Ramones supported us. You know, and you think, yeah. oh, you've, you sort of felt his pain, you know. <laughs> A little bit, you know. but I so mean, it's- many years later, this is. It, I mean, there's no bitterness. There's nothing about that. I mean, the Hives became, for a minute in time, the biggest band in rock and roll. Mm. That's what happened. And I mean, I w- I want to say that it could have been noise conspiracy, but I'm going to be honest and say we never wrote. Hate to say, I told you so. That's. I mean, that's just a fact. Like they wrote that song. And they just took off into the stratosphere. And, uh, you know, from touring together, we never toured together again. And then one time we've been, I think we were in the States and we were touring, we were flying home from somewhere. And the guys in the hives, we meet them at the airport in Munich and they're also flying home from somewhere. And we're hanging out, we're talking, and we get in the plane and the hives are like the row in front of us in the airplane. And when the plane lifts off, they just close the curtain. So they were like one row ahead, but the curtain was closed and they're like in first class and we're back here and we're like, it kind of summed up like our relationship. We're like, I guess we're yeah. back here and the hives are up there. And uh, I don't know it, they're great guys. And I mean, refused tour with them in yeah. 2019 and they're just, they are just fantastic. I mean, I, I remember bloody hell. I, I can remember some superb shows back then where with, with you and yeah, the highs on the same bill, which is yeah. I, I think most people now will find it hard to believe, you know, and also like yeah. bands like Randy and Sahara hot nights and obviously yeah, yeah. the soundtrack of our lives, my big yeah. favorites, you know, my mate. Yeah. And, um, what, what that was, it was a great period, you know, where, where we all embraced Swedish rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. It, it was interesting because I've, I've been, I'm not sure it's lucky enough, but I always been like, kind of marched into my own beat. And I was like, we're doing this stuff. And then, I mean, Refused became a big band after we broke up. And when we started Noise Conspiracy, the garage rock thing wasn't really a thing. Like we were into the Nuggets box set. I was into Northern Soul. I was into the jam. We're like, let's start a band, you know? And um, for like a hot minute, we were part of the cool thing. Like for like a little bit of time, we're like, okay, we're, we're part of this like you, we got sucked up in this, like the garage rock explosion revival thing. We're like, I guess, you know, we're, you know, um, so it's quite fascinating to see. I mean, um, none of my other bands have played in the UK as much as noise conspiracy. Like, mm. cause at one point in time, we were like part of that whole scene and it was, uh, it's quite interesting to see how that works. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, I don't remember Refuse. As I said, I wasn't really into that scene at the time, So, I, but I don't remember Refuse playing that often in the UK, you know. Um, no, we, we did, uh, 
We did some really abysmal touring <laughs> in the UK uh, before we broke up. And then I think in 1996, we played the Fuck Reading Festival um, <laughs> and uh, it did not go over well. Yeah. <laughs> it was like EBH and Exploited, Peter and the Test Tube Baby, it's Angelica Upstarts and Refused. And, wow. and uh, there was a lot of people in the front row screaming fucking wankers at us for like yeah. 45 minutes. <laughs> that's that's England for you, yeah. It, is, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> well, you know, you did say you didn't write. I hate to say I told you so, and no, um, but you did write, uh, which again I'm going to be self indulgent here. My, one of my probably top twenty songs yeah. of all time, I would say, and that's "Communist Moon" from Oh, oh Wow, this album, <laughs> yeah, which to me that's is one of those an unexpected track, but yeah, well, uh, it's it's an absolute garage rock pop punk classic i mean what can what can thank you. you say i mean it's i mean i it, it's one of those songs in an alternative universe would have been a, would have been number one as they say um well the I title just, is communist moon so i mean already shooting ourselves in the foot <laughs> Again, I could have chosen um, a small demand. You know, I mean, the way I feel about you, what a great pop song. Perfect yeah. pop song. Um, it's great. Black Mask, another great, great track. So, International Noise Conspiracy, I could talk all day about them, but I won't. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm rummaging through my record, with, through my Dennis-related records here. So That is awesome. So, um, your current project as well as fake names because I said I didn't want to get all nostalgic um yeah is invasion um, yes which again is a t- shows another aspect of your musical personality um in the fact that it's a um a kind of dark post-punk a very atmospheric band you know which again pe- pe- may be people that uh, it's very difficult because you, you know if you're a fan of, of your music if you say I'm an international noise conspiracy fan then suddenly you hear refuse you're going to go bloody hell is that Dennis or a refuse fan might hear invasion and think God, bloody hell, is that Dennis doing that? You know, because you're, you're, you're picking out so many different aspects of your record collection, but put turning them into bands almost. Am I, I know. Do, I do know. you know what I mean? I, yes, yes, for sure. And, and I think it's, uh, it's one of those things about my career, if you want to call it that. It's like the only consistency that I've ever had is that I'm really curious and I want to try everything. Uh, and I could see like the optics of it's people being like, wait, does he have like a weird post-punk band? And then he has this hardcore band. And then, I mean, I could see that, but it's like, 
it would be incredibly boring if you're a person that only has this one thing. I only love this one thing. And I mean, I love music too much and I like to create and I like to push myself and um, stuff that I do with Invasion, I could never do with Refused. And then stuff I do with fake names, I couldn't do with, you know, so it's like all these different projects, uh, they're just parts of me that I can expand upon and that, that I can create. And and I love it. And I think Invasion is one of those bands that, uh, I mean, I guess that goes in periods, but it's probably the type of band, if all my bands would break up, Invasion would probably be the type of band that I would start up. That right. type of like uh, dark, moody, post-punk, I call it dystopian pop music or whatever. And uh, it's it's just like one of those bands, like they're my closest friends and we've been playing together for a really really long time and it's it's a very creative band because there are no real uh limits to what we can do mm. i mean with with refused and with fake names there are certain expectations of uh of what people want from it even though it's we're still kind of free to do what we want but yeah. there are certain sort of uh there's like a framework basically yeah. and invasion doesn't really have that it we were we're pretty free to do whatever we want and we're right now talking about what's the new record next record going to sound like and yeah. what approach are we going to have and and we'll see it's it's quite yeah. interesting to be able to do that so this is very much a current ongoing project isn't it and um yeah yeah we yeah. put out a uh, we put out a record i mean it's it's a year ago we put out the latest record and then actually on friday next friday i'm showing records as well here's a new invasion ep coming out uh next friday yeah it's five oh. songs I mean, it's out digitally already uh, on the streaming services, but the vinyl version is coming out on next Friday, whatever that is. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the... that's, that, that's very much ongoing. We're doing a European tour after the summer. And, you know, it's like one of those bands that uh, I, I, I spend a lot of time on, on, um, on Invasion. Yeah. So if anyone hasn't heard, because again, Invasion hasn't played in the UK. If I, I'm not that I know of. I don't, have you played here? Yes. Yeah. About... Eight years ago, oh, okay. we toured with Echo and the Bunnymen. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. We did like five shows with Echo and the Bunnymen, uh, and it was great. And oh, then we never came back. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's one of those, like, uh, you know, sometimes you look at, like, your management or your booking agent and whatever, you're like, wait, we just did a really nice tour with Echo and the Bunnymen, and, and there's some, some cool shows, and their crowd really got us. And then we never been back. It's it's quite wild. But uh, yeah, we did a couple of shows with them, and it, it was fantastic. So, what's the new EP um, called, and and how can people? It's get called hold of How it? Far How Far Have We Fallen, mm. and it's a bit of a. It's recorded the same time uh, as the last record uh, called "Let the Night Love You." Uh, it's kind of the same session, but these are some songs that we just felt like we'll save this for the EP and make a really cool EP. It's not the leftover tracks. It's just some tracks that we yeah. felt didn't fit in on the, on the vibe of, of the album. Yeah, sure. Tell me if um, for our listeners who would like to get a taste of invasion, what track would you, I know it's very difficult to sum up a band like invasion because it is very, there's a lot yes. of that catalog and that, but give us an example of a track that you, you, you would recommend people listening to I, I would say uh the song slow disco from uh oh, from yeah. the latest album i think that's a track that that sort of uh sums up the vibe of the band pretty well great let's hear it that's here invasion and um slow disco Nightmares. There's a silence 
So invasion, and um, if you're googling them and put in I just to make things difficult, I N V S N. Yep. I N V S N. And then you will find invasion. Yep. Great band, and I do hope you do come back. Yeah. I, I hope so as well. I really wanna wanna come to the UK and play some shows. It's been yeah. it's been a long time coming. Again, another little bit of synchronicity is Sarah from um, International Noise Conspiracy plays in invasion as well yes she does so she's been a long time collaborator of yours there yes she's my uh, she's my oldest uh, and closest friend and uh, we actually to make things even more uh, confusing we actually started a new punk band together where she sings and i play guitar ah okay and what's the name of this new band that we need to look at it's called venice casino it's one of those pandemic projects um I wanted to do a band for a long time with with Sarah on vocals because I think she's a great singer, but she's never been comfortable with be, being the singer. So when the pandemic hit, I wrote all these punk rock songs, and it it is kind of a uh, it's very Dead Kennedys esque kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I just wrote all these songs, and I'm like, Sarah, you're singing these songs, and she's like, Really? I'm like, Yeah, yeah, you're singing. I'm just playing rhythm guitar, not even lead guitar. I'm just playing rhythm guitar. I sing a little bit, but it, it's mostly Sarah, and it's just uh, tons of fun. Yeah. Have you got any um, stuff out at the moment? Any records out? No, but no. there will be a record uh, coming out in May sometime. Okay. So there's, there's a record. I mean, we recorded it last year, and it's just been waiting for the right time to release it. So, oh, uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll give, it a, we'll give it a spin in a, in a yes, podcast. Yes, I think it will be up your alley. I think it's like that yeah. type of punk that uh, right. Good. I think you'll like it. And she's playing bass in Invasion, is that right? Is she? Yeah, she, she's, yeah, yeah. And talking about bass players, obviously um, Inge, uh, Inge Johansson, in, was a bass player of um, International Noise Conspiracy, Conspiracy. Yeah. and he's again is another one of our special podcast guests. So we had a. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought your record collection was huge, but Inge's was like. <laughs> When when I when I interviewed, I was just looking at this the room and his whole house. It just everything was just like records. He's records. got a very small apartment, so yes. I, think, <laughs> I think the impression is is quite he, overwhelming. Yeah, quite yeah, amazing. So I mean, again, Inge goes into the um, international noise conspiracy uh, pick, and he's got a great band called Gartu Plan, which is a, a Swedish language punk band, which is great. So sure. check them out and check out our podcast with Inge. Thank you. Yeah, great. Well, Dennis, thank you. I think. Um, it's been fascinating talking to you and talking about your another f- project quickly that you're on is Back and Back and Grille. I don't know how you can yeah, pronounce that. Back and Grille. Which again is interesting because this is more of a dark jazz band with Mats Gustafsson on the on the yeah. sax, who I saw play yeah. in Uppsala in uh, the Nymphet Noodlers reunion. Oh yeah, and it was amazing. Yeah, wow. I think he he's like uh, 
I mean, he's he's one of those dudes there. I was like, he's one of the best free jazz saxophone players in the world. Uh, yeah. yeah. He grew up in Umeå and he was a kind of punk adjacent in the early 80s. And then he moved and became a, a jazz sax player. And we'd known him for years. And um, he asked if we wanted to do a collaboration with him at the Umeå Jazz Festival last year. And mm. we said, yeah, it sounds cool. But so it's like, it's me and David and Magnus from Refused. Mm. Uh, and then him playing saxophone and um it's very it's like a weird mix of uh free jazz mix with like doom metal it's mm-hmm. really awesome and really cool and uh we also have a record recorded uh, that that's that's being mixed right now and i hope that it will come out later this year it's really i mean it's very free it's like the record is like you know 45 minutes long it's like four tracks <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, he, he was uh, amazing to, to see him play live, you know. But yeah. uh, And again, another little link, um, because Sweden's very musically very great community, is uh, Matthias Valier was in Nymphet Noodlers when I saw yes. uh, And of course, I saw the, the, the reunion. And uh, he's in the new lineup of, or the, the last lineup of Refuse, the live touring yes. lineup. Yeah. And he was also on your last album with yep. you saw you play in london um which is great so there's lots of nice synchronicity there you know to and all yeah, your, yeah. it's a great it's a great community yeah and i and i think it's i mean sweden's a small country and uh the rock and roll scene of sweden is kind of small so if if you've been around for long enough you know everyone and i mean we known matthias since uh he was in a band called mind jive in the 90s know, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh Refused toward with Mind Jive. So, oh, really? yeah, in 96 or 97. So when the idea of, like, we need a new guitar player came up, he was the only one on our list of people that we wanted to ask. And he said yes. And uh, he is a, a full-fledged member of Refused these days. Oh, fantastic. Great. Yeah. Yeah, well, we saw him play um, the, the, the debut show with the, he had a sort of hard rock, classic rock band called Freefall with... Um, yes, yes. Um, Which it's also connected because it's Ludwig Lude. from the Lude on drums. It's, yeah. It's all connected, isn't it? You know, it is. In fact, I, I, I was in touch with, with Lude and, and Indochine they're playing in London. Uh, Lude lives now in Paris and he's, yeah. he's playing in a huge stadium rock band called Indochine and they're, they're playing in... Um, in London soon, so I hope hope to get to see him again. Um, but it's it's a great uh, a great community which we obviously love. And check out Retrosonic podcast; loads of Swedish stuff on there. Matthias Helberi, um, Matthias Barrieri in person, Ebert, obviously loads of Swedish music, loads of Swedish uh, artists on Retrosonic podcast archive. And Dennis, just to end on, I just wanted to talk about your YouTube channel, which is uh, Dennis the Cuts, which makes my podcast look like a, a sort of little paddle in the water. Hello everyone and welcome to Dennis Deep Cuts, uh, this first installment of a YouTube uh, channel show series. I don't know what, it, what it's going to be, but it's going to be the first installment and um, it's going to be me rambling on about music, art, culture, more music and then some more music and maybe possibly some politics as well. We'll see where we land. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dennis Rixent. I've done a couple of record labels and I'm a massive, massive record collector. Um, I'm a massive nerd, basically. So I figured what better way to celebrate that than to talk about music and talk about the records that that I like and talk about things that I like. I hope you are going to come along for the ride. So let's do it. So this is where you look at, you just basically go through your record collection and music book collection and... Uh, and wax lyrical and it's this fantastic fascinating episodes where thank the enthusiasm you enthusiasm for music just comes out and it it's dangerous because it will have you reaching for your discogs and checkbook and going to the record shop but uh, tell us about this i think that's the idea i mean um i'm a record collector i've been pretty much my entire life and uh I just felt I needed, to, I mean, I didn't really need more work, but I, I was intrigued by the idea of like just talking about um, music in a, in, a, in a way that wasn't interviews or stuff like that, but just like, I'll talk about records that I like. Um, plus, I mean, I want it to be more conversations. I want it to be more topical as well, but uh, I haven't really traveled that much. So I've been, I haven't gotten around to interview people 
which I will do when I go to the States. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's me being a nerd bragging about the, the awesome record collection that I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. And it's, it's, um, we'll put links up to the YouTube channel in the feature and Thank I'll you. be sharing yeah. it, but it's fascinating listening. It, it's more um, work than I thought it would be. It was like, I'm like, oh, it'd be super easy. But then, I mean, to come up with a with a topic for the week and then to go through the collection and see what fits. And then, you know, but I really enjoy it. Also, it's given me a chance to revisit a lot of music because I'm like, yeah. you know, let's do a top 10 debut album of all time. So then you have to look through all the records and you have to listen. I'm like, oh, these are, you know, so it's it's a great way for me to just enjoy listening more to music and uh, I get to brag about my record collection. I yeah. like it. And I think, obviously, we haven't touched on so many things. We haven't touched on politics, on, on Refuse very much, on, on loads and loads of stuff. But I think one of the most pressing questions I've had sent in was um, to ask you was, how do you file your record collection, Dennis? All right. Do you want... Okay. Is it in <laughs> alphabetical order? Is it in genre? Is it... <laughs> It's in genre and it's in uh, years. Ah, right. So over here I have a uh, UK indie rock, which is kind of broad, but it's everything from post punk to the Smiths to whatever yeah. you know, the Water Boys, basically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> from the seventies and eighties, and then I have one section from the nineties and two thousands, and then I have a US indie section from the eighties and nineties. You know, and then over here I have a. Uh, UK classic rock 60s, 70s, and then I have US classic rock 60s, 70s, and then I have metal, and then I have hard rock, and then over here by the wall, it's that's all American hardcore from 1979 to 1989. Wow. Uh, so, so it's like genre and year and then alphabetical. Thank you. I can sleep easy tonight. <laughs> Well, Dennis, um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I said we could have, uh, I could, well, I could have chatted all night about music as usual. Um, but uh, so thanks for listening, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little look into into Dennis's part of, well, a small part of Dennis's musical career. Yes. We, we've, there's still bits we haven't touched on, but obviously there's yeah. a voyage of, voyage of discovery there for everyone, which is the best part of finding out about a band, isn't it? Sometimes that you, you know, you find out, you, you find a band, you fall in love with a the band, then you realize, wow they've got this side project and oh God, they used to be in this band and Hey, yeah. they used to be in that band. And that's part of the fun. So I recommend everybody checking out Dennis's uh, fantastic back catalog. Um, it will take you a long while. So good luck. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And um, we hope to see you play soon with fake names yeah. hopefully, and or invasion. Or if, if you ever get international noise conspiracy back, of course we won't be um, disappointed either. No, no, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well thanks, thanks for having me. It was ah. it was a blast. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, thanks. So to play us out, um, I know you've got a little dedication for us. So we're gonna get we're gonna end on an international noise conspiracy track. Yes, we're gonna end with uh, one of my favorite tracks called Bigger Cages Longer Chains, and I'm gonna dedicate this to Mike and Elsa, because I heard that that would make them very happy. <laughs>
you're not 